Namaste, welcome to my channel. My name is Masha and welcome to another episode of Geeking Out on Marseille series where I will be sharing with you two dags that arrived all the way from France. They came in this package, safely packaged. I removed the package and I removed the plastic to save us the time. And they also came with this personal note in a form of Ace of Coins uh, from Yves Renault. So both of those decks from Yves Renault of Terre de Marseille Heritage. And the note is saying, Salut Masha, here is your Zerger number 657 out of 1500 and your Christmas present. I got a deck as a Christmas present from Eve, number seven. I love number seven, lucky number out of 1500. My very best wishes for the coming year, best Eve. This is my gift of terror from Eve. How kind and generous of you, Eve. It was to send me this dog as a gift for Christmas. So I'm going to open it now because I'm dying to open it now. Christmas gift bag here. And we have Tero Arnu and I'm full. My gift from Eve is a copy number seven out of 1500 produced. But as you can see, my friends, from the title of the video, I will be sharing with you those two decks side by side. Are they different Tero decks? Yes, absolutely. They are even of different styles. Tero of Jacob Zerga is of Besançon lineage, where Arnu and I'm full Tero is of Terre de Marseille lineage. Now we know that when we talk about Besançon and Marseille dogs, generally those titles, they refer more to the lineages and the styles of the dogs, not the location where they were manufactured. Well, these ones are unique because uh, Terre Jacob Zorga was manufactured in the city of Besançon and it's a Besançon style dog, where Arnu and Amfu is Terre de Marseille dog with Marseille lineage, but also with those two card makers, Arnu and Amfu manufactured this dog in the city of Marseille. Another commonality that those decks share is both of them, they were produced originally in uh, 1801. Of course, these ones are the reproductions of the authentic decks that were produced in 1801. And another reason why I wanted to share with you those decks side by side is because they are the first decks that came to my knowledge that I found out that uh, feature the card maker's name names uh, engraved, written, stamped on all of the trumps and all of the court cards in those decks. So if you will, and again, it's just, I see it this way. I see those decks as sort of predecessors of copyright where the artist or the creator was, uh, where the name of the artist or the creator was noted on the cards. And now it's time for us to turn the camera around to have a good and up close look at these beautiful boxes that the cards came in, the quality of the cards, the backs of the cards, along of course with all of the cards side by side. Let us begin by having a look at the boxes side by side of the Tarot D'Arnu and Amfu and the Tarot of Jacob Jorge or Jacob Jorge. I don't know which <laughs> which way to go for uh, the J or the German Y Jacob way. But anyway, so as you can see, the Jacob Jorge uh, box is a little bit taller, but just by a little bit, as you can see in here. And as the width goes, also it's a little bit wider as you can see in uh, this way when I position the cards like so but um, but the thickness of the boxes is around the same so the cover we have the page of uh, batons for the Arnu and Amfu and we have the moon card for ja Jacob Jorgatero 
we have here different uh, sides so I would assume this one would be taken from the suit of batons or maybe even the swords but this one is the suit of coins if we move this way so the side of the box says on one side the description of the tarot in French language so we can see the Jorga tarot was produced in 2020 by Eve and the Arnoon and Four was released in 2018 the top of the box has the same pattern as the bottom of the box and here on the other side we do have the description of the tarot in English so for the Jacob Jorga we read numbered and limited edition of the most famous tarot of the Besançon type produced by the German master Cartier German master Cartier Jacob Jorga or Jakob Jorger in uh, 1801 the stereo model presenting characteristics the differentiate of the so-called Marseille canon is reissued on the basis an original copy from a very well preserved private collection and then we look at the tarot from Arnoon and Fou, Mastercard makers in Marseille. So we have two of them, right? Arnoon and Amfu, edition based on a copy of private collection of one of the rare ancient tarots preserved, complete, created and printed in Marseille, city of Marseille. This post-revolutionary diag is characterized by the mention NX, year 10 affixed on the two of coins which we will have a look at dating defined according to the french revolutionary calendar when it comes to the quality of those boxes all boxes from ifreno from terro de marseille heritage they're sturdy they're quite similar they have the off-white I guess some call it warm, warm ivory color. And they also have the setting finish just like his cards. So Arnoon and Fu, we have here the two of coins and the Jorgatero, we have two of cups. And here we see that NX right and the two of coins saying that 10 years after revolution, right? This, uh, that what was mentioned on the side of the box. Yeah, and uh, they open those boxes, they slide out easily, they don't, they're not stuck in any way, and they're the inside of the boxes, they are white, but again, those boxes, you can see they're super, super, super sturdy, and they look, they look beautiful on uh, shelves, so we'll have, well, let's do them in alphabetical order, right, so on the left hand side, we'll have Tero, Arnu, and Amfu, and the right hand side will be our Besançon Tero, by uh, Jacob Jorga, both dating the same year, right, 1801. So opening the boxes now, let's uh, just take the cards out and we'll have a look at the thickness of the ducks. So Arnoux and Amfu. We have the Jorga Tero here, so we can see the Jorga is a little taller and Arnoon and Ampu seems to be tiny, a little bit thicker just by a few cards. And the card size, we have the, oh, first we have those two cards, right, the first presentation cards, we have them in French and in English, but if we compare the sizes, the Jorga Tarot is a little bit bigger, is a little bit taller, a little bit wider than uh, Arnoon and Fu, hence the difference in the box sizes. But also if we compare it with AE Weight Tarot by AGM. What we will have here is, so let's do the Jorgas first. So we can see the Jorga is a little bit taller, but a little bit narrower too by not even half centimeter really. And then if we compare the Arnoin on four, the height of it is almost identical to AE weight. But AE weight seems to be about half centimeter, seven millimeters wider. So that's the size difference. And as you can see already there, the backs. Arnoin Amfu has the beautiful blue and white patent 
back where the Zerga, ja uh, Jacob Zerga Terror has more marble of warm of white, warm ivory with sort of reddish pinkish spots to form that marble like pattern. So we'll just move the French cards out to the side, and now we have those presentation cards in uh, in English. So you can, I'll just leave it here so I don't have to read the whole thing for you, but uh, you can pause here the video, you can, um, and just to, um, to read through this extra information available about those dogs. Cardstock wise, the cards have the setting feel to them. They are matte with tiny little bit of the sheen, as you can see if I put it to the light, but they don't have any gloss to them in any way. They photograph beautifully. They're quite sturdy. They're reasonably flexible, but not, uh, to the, uh, not to the point that you can bend them halfway, right? So you need to be careful with those, but they're extremely sturdy cards. I do refill shuffle my decks from Eve and they default shuffle just fine for me with some some of them the corners were out of the extremely sharp well these ones they do have sharpness but they don't feel extremely sharp that they would hurt my small hands so i really like this card stock it's uh, around 340 if not 360 gsm and now to the cards once again, on the left hand side, we have Arnu, and I'm for all, there, there is a reminder here that what I was talking about, that inclusion of the names of the card makers. So we have Arnu and Amfu, France as the country of the manufacturing of the DAC. This one, of course, was manufactured in the city of Marseille. This one comes from the city of Besançon. And we have again that uh, France as the country and Jay Jorga, Jacob Jorga. Yeah, stem, well, they look like stems really right over the cards to me, but I don't know much history about that. But I kind of like that, that the creators decided to include their names to on, on their majors, on the trumps of their decks, along with the court cards. Yeah, I'll just let you have a look for yourself about the differences. Of course, there are different decks. We have Marseille and Besançon here. The colors are different, but I do love the colors on both here. Black shoes, yellow shoes. And of course, in the Besançon, we have Junon and Jupiter instead of the Papess and the Pope, where the Marseille deck, of course, features La Papess once again. And I'm not going to point on every card, but you just uh, know it for yourself that we will have the country of origin of the deck and we have the, the names of the of the card, master card makers, the Marnou and Armfou from Marseille and Jacob Jorga, who who was originally from uh, Germany. And now when it comes to Besançon decks, right? So talking about uh, the uh, featuring of the Juno and Jupiter, they replaced the Pope and Papas due to the offense that the Protestants of France, of that region of France, took seen uh, Christian can canonical figures in the cards like that. So just one of the reasons I know why the eyes are beautiful. Again, I love the blues in Arnu and Amfu. And here again, I think we see that German reference uh, through the coat of arms uh, that Eagle featured in the Empress card. Again, we know that uh, Jacob, Jacob Jorga was German. And same, we see the defense coat of arms, the shield of the Emperor. The Pope, love the eyes, again replaced by Jupiter in the Besançon style deck. And Besançon style decks, they sort of that kind of blend of Terre de Marseille 1 and 2 and their own twist on, uh, on the cards. 
like in here of course are known on foods type uh, type too easily right so we have the the cupid the uh, facing the other way than in the other in uh, in the yoga deck we have the cupid without a blindfold way here the cupid is blindfolded but I do love the wood blockiness of the Zerga and I love the, oh, I don't know, they just remind me German faces that I'm used to seeing in German decks, especially my hair steroids sort of reminiscent to me of that. But of course, that was, of course, released way later. So you see how what I talk about when, when it comes to Besançon decks, how it's a blend. We have that um, oyster canopy right above the chariot, which is generally an indicator of type 1 Terra de Marseille. Yet here, type 2, very classic, right? So we have curtains. Both of them have some uh, ball engraving of the initials of the card maker. So AA, Arnu and Amfu. And here we have jo jo uh, jo uh, Jacob Jerger. I guess the, there are some initials there for him, right? And that's the engraving on the shield of the chariot is the indicator of type two. So we have the blend of one and two. That I love really, I love seeing that evolution. I love seeing that progression. And here they fit their names uh, on the clothing of the justice. So we have the hermit and here we have the capuchin and the brown clothing of the monk. The capuchin is a monk, right? From uh, that time. The handle of the wheel of fortune is on the opposite side in those decks. I love blues in both. I really like both of them. Joga still included his uh, name in the country in the death card and here I can't quite locate it. Arno and Amfu might be quite hidden. Again, death works in the opposite direction in those decks. Beautiful temperance, I love both of them. And of course the spelling is very interesting when it comes to our historic decks, but the blues are lovely. Look at this, the greens are lovely. And the devil, you see in Besançon we have this devil and we have the more familiar, that's what we used to in Terra de Marseille type 2, so the devil doesn't have any eyes and the knees or the belly. But that cute hairy devil, look, because the city of Besançon, where the Jerga Terra comes from, is located is actually on the eastern part of France, right, and it's near the border with Switzerland. So my uh, my guess that this Besançon deck was possibly influenced by Swiss earlier decks that we know of like the Francois Ritter of 1730 but again that's my speculation only I haven't read it anywhere just more what I've noticed uh, looking at the decks and with some of my historic decks that I see and also because of the um, uh, the master card maker was of German origin I don't know if he had any link with Switzerland I would assume it just the closest one would be probably the Swiss the location of the Switzerland to the city of Besançon as they are kind of almost bordering so we can see more classic tower here when here we have some kind of I don't know what it is a comet or feather or something striking the tower tower something longer So we have the bird here in the star and here the bird is missing and we have different points, right? So all the stars are five pointed in the Jacob Jorga Terra of Besançon and these stars, they have eight points, you can see five points only in the Jorga version, the moon is very different while little different depiction of the moon right in the Besançon style deck but yet it faces forward towards us which is generally 
is featured in type 1 tarot de marseille darks when this one the moon is to the side facing over to the left but again we're talking about classic marseille dark right and we're talking about the besançon one the sun is beautiful and the judgment we have the world She's quite beautiful. The full of the cat here reaching for the pant, and here the cat is biting into the clothing of the full or even into his flesh. Now we're moving on to the minor kana. And uh, as you can see, the, the Pip cards, the Minor Arcana cards, they don't have any reference to the names of the card makers, of the, uh, the master card makers behind those decks. But we can see that extra decoration here, flowering and leaves of the Jacob Zurg, Besançon version. You can see different in, difference in coloration in the suit of batons. B and A, I'm assuming it stays for batons here. <laughs> yeah. And maybe also indicating that the cards are not reversible or when they are reversed, so we know. And then B, A, batons. Unless it's something else. You can see the white spots in the Jerga version when the batons in Arnoon and Four fully colored. Beautiful blues in both decks. Evenly, when here we have those references of the little um, red batons coming through, different flowering. And we're back with having that Arnoin on foot stamping in France, Jogaf. Franz Jurger, J. J Jurger for the court cards. So we have here covering over the horse, where here we just have the saddle in the cavalier or the knight of batons. The queen uh, in Arnon of Four looks a little bit sadder, maybe softer. Well, look at the eyes. <laughs> And the clothing is different as well in uh, Jacob Zurg, Terra. And references here, stamping things. So you can see the sword, the Ace of Swords, and Zurg doesn't have any crown. Espe, yeah, so there is an indication in Arnon and Fu. So actually, this dark is quite profound, like, right? They included a lot of references, makes it actually a perfect dark. If now I think if anyone asks me about the tarot for beginners, more kind of historic reproduction, if anyone wants a really good one, I think this one is brilliant. Because when I started, I never knew when the swords were reversed with my default shuffling. And here I have ES for SP, right? Swords. Don't uh, quote me on my pronunciation. But we have also an interesting patterns in Jacob Jurga deck. So, right, what are those? Flowering, all the leaves sprouting. I really do appreciate that reference for the card so we know how to just distinguish when they're upside down or not. The swords are facing up in the nine of swords and down and the ten of swords in both decks into the courts and we're back with our engraved names. those queens, the kings, 
suits of coins. Yeah, so as I pointed, this one, Arnu and Amfu, so we have here A, E, Arnu, J, H, Amfu, but I've never really come across with their first names. And uh, yeah, so we have that X, 10 years post-revolution, that's the indication of the release of this DAG. And when we look at two of coins here in Jacob Jurga DAG, we can see them more embellished right around that. Look at the shield inside. We have a phoenix figure, eagle like phoenix figure in Arnu and Amfu, and we have more human figure with the serpent moving around. I've never seen anything like that. The quality and the production you can see how sharp those uh, cards are the images of those cards and we have the pages the valets so he's holding something here the coin is floating above the earth in the Jurga one, it's almost under in Arnu and Amfu. Slightly different facial expressions. Yeah, look at this. The screen is just kind of sort of gazing forward, maybe even down, not necessarily over the coin. And this one is like, what's this coin? The kings, we can see the, the ground is different. We see more like earth and some sprouting going on in Arnu and Amfu. We can see checkered like floors. And of course, again, here I think we see that Swiss influence of more embellished around the cup for the ease of cups. When here we have more crown like cup, in uh, as we do generally in Marseille Terrace. When we look at two of cups. We see that underneath, and that's the lower part of the cards. Here we see some sort of angels, and here we see some description for Jacob Jorga, fabricant manufactured cards of Besançon or in Besançon reference. This is our last suit here. You can see different variations in the cards. Longer cup for the Jurgis version. And again, check it floor, floors or tiles or yeah, flooring. Let's have a look how they shuffle Arnu and Amfu. Cards are smaller when it comes to their size, but thicker when it comes to the thickness of the dag. Let's see how they would refill. I don't reach my cards anywhere, but as you can see, you can refill them just fine. And of course, with my smaller hands, when I draw a hand, I would go for the top part right the narrow part of the cards because as you can see my hands are only tiny and now to Jacob Jurga at the backs yeah this one's actually well I mean the deck looks a bit thinner they do feel a little thinner as well yeah, to refill those. Yeah. And there they are. 
two wonderful terrors reproductions of historic beautiful ducks dating 1801 I hope so much that you have enjoyed a little bit of geeking out on Marseille and with Anson and our case today with me. When I film those videos, when I share with you decks side by side, very often I get asked a question, which deck out of two I prefer? Today is a very fortunate occasion because I do not have to choose because those two decks, as you have seen through the flip through, they belong to different styles. We have Jacob Zerga tarot of Besançon style, and of course the Arnaud and Amfou tarot of Marseille style, of Marseille lineage. I also I also want to take a moment to say a huge thank you to Yves Renaud for gifting me this beautiful Terre de Marseille, this beautiful reproduction of a historic, unique deck that was created in the city of Marseille. I will treasure this tarot, it will be read with and it will be used and loved. And I also want to take a moment to thank you all who joined me for this video, for watching. And if you have any questions, feedback, suggestions, corrections, please post them in the comments below. I will see you very soon. Namaste.